Hey, um, so I have two talks prepared. So I'm going to let you pick which one I will give. So one is more like more production kind of thing. So I will show how you can use the library to deploy the same code base as one or as multiple processes, which fixes like a lot of issues with how you write node apps because you write like a lot of processes. And the other one is a crazy streams level to be hacky thing that kind of isn't, doesn't teach you things that you can use or you will use tomorrow. Oh, hey. But um, it's like more educational. So who wants the production talk? And who wants the streams hacky talk? Yeah, I think that's even, and since I pre huh? yeah. <laughs> and since I actually prepared the streams talk, I think I'll give that one. <laughs> so if at, if at any time, um, can, can you hear me? Yeah. If at any time a font size is too small or a mic at typo, please shout out. So, actually it's not just about streams, it's about common interfaces that you can use in order to have maximum code reuse and be able to just plug things together that were never supposed to be working together. So one of those common interfaces is the file system. Like everyone has one, everyone knows how to use it, and that's great. Next one is streams. Streams are for like streaming link transforming things or transmitting things like they're the, the concept of sending chunks over like a connection. And there's level up. Um, who has heard about level up or level DB? Okay, so LevelDB is an embeddable data, database engine from Google, and we wrote LevelUp, which is a node binding, which then evolved to something completely different, or not completely, but somehow different. So LevelUp is a common interface for databases, and there are multiple backends for that, for example, LevelDB, or MySQL, or IndexedDB, yeah. So if, if you want to learn more about these things, there's a website called NodeSchool. It's at nodeschool.io, and there are multiple workshops on there that you can do yourself in your terminal that teach you about Node, Streams, and LevelDB. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing we'll do is we'll pipe a file from the server over WebSockets to the client's um, index DB, and it will be pretty simple. So we require HTTP, we use ecstatic, which is a static file server, and we will create a server first. And the server will just be serving the static files from the current directory, and we make it listen on port 8000. Then we need WebSockets. I'm going to use a library called Shoe for that, which is built on top of SockJS and just exports a, exposes a streaming interface on top of WebSockets. So there's Shoe. Shoe's written by Substack, by the way, because it's there. So we create a sock, because a sock is in a shoe, and get a connection object. And we install that socket, that sock onto the server at slash shoe. What you get inside here, this con object, is a duplex stream. And I'll show you why that's great in a minute. So next thing is we, we require the file system. And what we'll do is we'll create a read stream of a file called um, file.txt, which has some lorem ipsum text. And we'll pipe it to the connection. 
Cool, that's the server part. Let's go to the client side. Um, for client side code, I'm always using Browsify because it lets you write client code the node way, so you have you can require modules. So the, the server did the WebSocket things. Now the client needs to do it too, so we require a shoe on the client. And our connection will be this. And we are going to pipe it somewhere. So for that, or for similar things, I have a module called container L, which is like document body, but you can insert to it before body is ready. So we pipe it to the container, and that should just work. I will bundle my client code with Browsify. And I'll start the server. OK, that's, that's kind of bad. Sorry. OK, I'll have to make the font a bit smaller. By the way, this is called Secure Shell. It's a Chrome app. Um, Uh, yeah, so of course we can't just stream into a DOM element. So I wrote a library that's called DOM stream. It's not an NPM yet, or maybe there is already something like that in NPM. I think like this. Yeah. So we pipe into DOM stream, which goes to container. Sweet. So now we have this file piped to the client. Of course, we could also use Ajax, or an Ajax even is streaming on used Chromes and maybe other browsers, but usually we don't get streaming Ajax. So if transmitting over WebSockets is OK, and maybe if you even have binary capable WebSockets, like that's really superior to Ajax. OK, so we piped a file to the browser. We want to store it in the browser. To store things, we need a database. So I will require level up. Level up, as, as I said, is this generic database interface, which can have multiple backends. And one of those backends is level JS, which is, um, exposes um, index DB. So I will require level JS. This is still in the, on the client, things like this. And I'll create a new DB, level up, DB, and as a backend, use level.js. Now I have a DB, but I can't stream to it because level up doesn't um, provide you with a method to stream into a value. So there's a module called level star. So as you notice, most of the level modules are prefixed with level. So with level star, I'll create a star on top of the DB. And I can pipe to that star. But since I want to pipe to DOM stream and to my star, um, I'll use a module called T, which is like the Unix T command, which like splits streams and, let, and writes multiple things. Um, I can pipe to T, and I will pipe to DOM stream and star.create write stream file. Yeah. If I run this now, whoops. Um, and if I expose the star on the window object, I have my store, so I can do store.create read stream of file and on data console log. Sweet. So this we retrieved in a streaming manner from the client. Um, I'll make this bigger. In a streaming manner from the client, and it's now also in the index DB. Cool. So 
There's kind of an abstraction mismatch here because on the server we're using the file system which supports things like directories. But on the client, this thing just supports keys. So because we, we like common abstractions, we want to use the file system on the client. So the, the file system API. So I've been working on a module called levelfs with which you can do var fs equals level fs of db. And here you do fs.create write, uh, write stream like foo slash bar slash file.txt. And if we run this, of course we get this. Okay, so now we have the file system. Remember we did fs.createWriteStream as a node. Now on the client we can do fs.readFile foo bar file.txt and we get our file. So any module that is using the file system or expects a file system now can run on the client because we have the file system. And there, there's no new API to learn. You just read the node docs and you know how to use this module. Okay, so we got this now. The next thing we want to do is we want to pipe multiple files to the client. Like, I can't imagine an app where you just like expose one file to the client. That's pretty rare. So since we are using streams and we don't want like one WebSocket connection for each file, we need to multiplex and demultiplex on top of that stream. So there is a module called MaxDemux by Dominic Tarr. Oops. Um, and with that module, we can demux and max streams. So we create a max demux instance, pipe that max demux instance to our WebSocket, and pipe that WebSocket to our max demux instance. Um, if that confuses you, the Node School I/O streams workshop like really should should have understand what that's doing. But basically, this says. Okay, Maximax and WebSocket tell each other everything you do. So now on the client, we say if Maximax gets a connection, um, wait, let's actually do this server first. On the server, require Maximax. It's so re relieving to be able to do that, like just reuse modules and client and server. So on every WebSocket connection, we create a Maximax instance. Do the same con.pipe maxdemax.pipecon thing. And then instead of piping this file directly to the connection, we will pipe to a Maximax write stream, which we call file.txt. And we'll have another file called um, lyrics.txt, and we'll tell it that it's lyrics. So here we have lyrics.txt. Um, because there's a bug that I just discovered yesterday, um, we have to um, convert this binary stream to a string stream. And I don't yet know exactly why, but I will fix that. And when I fix that, I will update this repo where all the code is. Oh, by the way, that's not score. It's pretty awesome. So I have a small library that's called to string that is a stream that yeah, converts to strings. So we pipe that here. Okay, so 
the server creates write streams and tells the client, hey, it's called lyrics.txt. So here we get the file name as the connection.meter object. So we will pipe the connection to our T thing. Um, whoops. My Vim foo isn't that good, please forgive me. Um, okay, so now let's run this. So as you see here, we have our lorem ipsum, and here we have our um, lyrics. And in this case, they arrive sequentially because they are not big enough to be split up into multiple chunks. But if you have bigger files, they will be split up into multiple chunks, and you would actually see them like be mixed. Cool. So that's stream multiplexing. But because a lot of people like have are confused with how to use MaxDmax, I will turn the whole thing around. So instead of waiting for the connection on the client, I will ask for a file on the client and the server will respond to that. So currently, like here, we're telling the client this is there, and the client asks, hey, what is there? We will move, uh, turn that around. So on the client, um, we don't need to listen for new MaxiMax connections anymore. We just create a MaxiMax read stream of <coughs> lyrics.txt and put that to lyrics. And on the server, now on the server we need to listen for connections. Oh, and by the way, if you don't understand something, feel free to ask. So, the, here the server gets the file name. And please don't do this in production. <laughs> Um, and pipe the connection. And if you run this, it should still work after it's bundled. Yes, it still works. We only got the lyrics, of course. Okay, so now we inverse the control but there are some more exciting things to do. Um, yeah, so because we're using the file system, we can leverage a whole lot that exists on your computer. And one thing that the file system has that's special is special files like Daffy Random, which is the CDU number generator. So what we will do is we will pipe def random to the client and see if we can do something valuable with that. So, um, I don't need to listen for the file name. I don't even need maxdmax anymore. So what we'll do is we'll create a read stream of def urandom. I don't know if something like this exists on Windows, but I hope, kind of. <laughs> Okay, so we'll create a restream of def random and pipe it to the client. But um, that will crash our browser because that's way too many data, way too fast. So there's a cool stream called throttle. So before we pipe to the connection, we pipe to the throttle stream and we will throttle it to 100 bytes or I think 10 bytes per second, per second, that's that. And on the client, we also get rid of max dmax and say shoo um, dot pipe. We want to see what we're getting. Yeah, and we'll put it, we'll write to random and we'll say the flag is append. So the file won't be deleted before we start writing. Let's see if that works. Cool, so we got our dev random stream on the client. It's pretty red, huh? 
So what could we do with that? So, okay, now it stopped because we killed the server. So I couldn't really think of a very cool thing. Maybe something with generating images would be rad, but we'll generate audio. So, oh, so what, what kind of audio will we get when we pipe a random source into some audio function? Does anyone know that? Nice, white noise, exactly. So um, the way, the, the new hip way to write audio is to write functions that return values from minus one to one, because that just maps to amplitudes. So what we need to do is on the client, we will need to pick this stream of data and convert it to random minus one to one things. So I have a small stream here that's called buff to audio and that just does some ASCII things and it doesn't even really work, but it works well enough. Um, you can look at that on, on the GitHub thing later. So buff to audio stream. Um, so we will pipe this shoe thing to buff to audio stream. And let's see what we get by that. Hmm, we don't get anything. That's kind of bad. Uh, I think I, I know what's going on here. Yeah, so we're getting data. Um, it's just not being appended to the DOM because it's the wrong data type. So we can actually get rid of the DOM stream. And we don't need to record this, but we will pipe it to a web audio stream. So I wrote a library called web audio stream, which I will also publish if, there's not, if there isn't something like that already, which um, takes in data and gives that data to the web audio function, which is called like on, a, all, on every web audio tick. So if we pipe the def u random to our buffer to audio stream, to our web audio stream, which I need to include. Oh, and if we plug in the audio, wait a second. Put that. Oh, thanks. Yay for good preparation. Oh, and a short thing to note um, the web audio stream uses math random if it doesn't have, if it doesn't yet have enough data from the deaf u random stream. So, let's see if that works. Yay, we get white noise. But it's not a solid white noise. So, you hear, did you just hear that? Like, now it's just using def, uh, math random. So the reason why we're not getting that much is because we're only setting like two bytes per second from the server, that's why to fuse, let's like do 40K. That should still work. You hear that? Now what you can hear is when there is enough data from that few random and when there isn't. Like the, I think the more solid is still math random and the other one is that few random. So, and that's just math random. So if we crank it up to like 60K, which should still work. Yeah, that is def u random. If I kill the server, it's math random now. Cool. So, oh, I will kill that. So, thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank um.